Hey y'all, this is Dana. Welcome to my channel. I am back with my next craft fair idea. Y'all, we're going to be making kitchen hot pads. I made these probably when I first started my channel um, over a year ago. I bring these back to my craft fairs every year because they sell. And let me just tell you, they're so simple to make. Let me just tell you all about it. Okay, so what you're going to need is you're going to need a 10 by 10 square for the bottom and a piece of batting that, that, I, that I just use, fusible batting. Um, you're also going to need four more pieces of 10 by 10, and you're going to iron them, as I did here, at a diagonal from side to side. Okay, so all you're going to need is a total of five 10 by 10 squares and the fusible batting. Okay, so what I use my hot pad for is I do not use it as a pot holder. This is just for you to lay your hot dish on when you're, like if you take something off and put it on the table, you don't want it to burn your table, these are great for that. Um, you might want to use some thicker or th some thicker batting, something heat resistant if you're going to use this as a pot holder. But that's not the reason for this. The reason for this is just to protect your surface and just have something... Um, something to put between the table and your and your serving dish. So anyway, let me just show you how I do this. Okay. So we're gonna get started. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna have the pretty side of your fabric up. And as you see, I already kinda basted it down, just quickly ironed down my batting. Um, and then you're going to take your first, your first um, square that's ironed in half, and you're going to put it from the points you're going to line this up and as you see it's you've already ironed it in half so you don't have to worry about worrying about which is the front or the back so you're going to line it up just like this and I rotate mine every other one so now I'm going to go this way with my next one and then I'm going to use my other one that is the plaid and I'm gonna start it down here at this corner so it's like your every other corner you're adding you're adding the points to every other corner and then lastly I have my last piece of piggy fabric just like this and I'm gonna line that up just like that so as you see you got three that are overlapping are three that are like so what you do is you hold this down with your hand lift this up bring that one over and put that one back down just like that and that's how you get the pattern to look just like this okay so as you see I'm using a directional print and that actually worked out well where my pigs are all looking the same way um, so if you don't have a directional fabric, you might want to think, or if you do have a directional fabric and you put it together and it's kind of wrong, you might want to flip it, but I think it's going to work out just fine. Okay, so now I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to pin to hold it in place. I haven't sewed in a while, y'all, because life has been so busy. So... I'm glad I was able to get a little space cleaned off my sewing table again. I'm just going to make sure that I keep these just all nicely in a row. If it pulls up on one side, just lay it back down. Just like this. Okay. I have one more side right over here. Just like this. And just pin it down. I'm going to stick a pin in the center just to hold it down. Just like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew all the way around the perimeter of my hot pad. And then when we're done, you'll be almost done, y'all. Okay, let me get you over to the sewing machine. Okay, so I've got my hot pad all ready to roll here. Get my presser foot where I need it. And then I'm using my down feature. And it's probably a good practice to go ahead and just back stitch. Use the presser foot to the edge of your fabric. 
So this will make it not a 10 by 10 when you're done. It'll probably make it about a nine by nine because of the seam allowance. If you want it to be a straight 10 by 10, then you can go ahead and make your fabric a little larger. But this is going to work out just fine, just like this. And get to the corner, just pivot. Once you get all the cutting done, this is the most simplest project you will ever, ever make. I've probably been making these probably 10 years. So, yep, they work well. You can make them in like patriotic or, you know, whatever, you know, seasons, anything. Anything will work. Make sure my stitching stays in. Get this pulled out. Okay, so now it looks like this, y'all. I'm gonna take out that center pin because we no longer need it. And let's move it back over here so you can see what the next step is. Okay, so when you get over here to these corners, before you go flipping anything, let's just trim off the corners just to reduce bulk on those corners. Make sure you don't cut through your seam allowance. Just kind of trim up the corners. Okay. So now that you've done that, what you're going to do is you're going to take it and you're going to turn it inside out. So reach in there and turn this inside out. Okay, and as you see, the seams are gonna be up inside. Make sure you poke out your corners. I'm just using my finger to poke out my corners. here to this one and one more okay so here we go and this is what it looks like I'm going to take it to my urn and give it a really good press and then we're going to sew a top sticker stitch around the edge be right okay y'all so I've got my hot pad on nicely pressed as you see now I'm just going to put it under my machine carefully and I'm going to sew a top stitch around the whole perimeter of my hot pad. Okay, so let me see. Use my down feature. You can use a decorative stitch if you want. I'm just using a straight stitch. I'm just using regular two and a half stitch length. And I'm using the edge of the presser fit with the edge of my fabric. That's how big my seam will be. When you get over here to the corner, pivot. And as you see, it's nicely pressed down and nicely ironed down. And slowly, Try to stay along the edge. Pivot. One thing about 
about using like a plaid fabric like I'm using here sometimes if they didn't cut it straight or if the fabric wasn't printed straight it makes it look like you're sewing crooked when really it was a 10 by 10 square okay one more side so one thing about using that kind of fabric is whenever you buy it, they don't always have it cut as straight. If you have a walking foot, you could use your walking foot for this, but mine's working just fine without it. I'm just going to go back here. Okay, so there we go. Now, let's trim off our threads. This is the easiest sewing project you'll ever have. Now, you can leave it just like this, or if you want to sew down the centers to the other side, you can do that, which that's what I'm going to do. That will kind of anchor it down. I'm gonna try to sew as close to the edge as I can get it. Or if you want to zigzag, why don't we try a zigzag and see how that will look. Or you can just sew the center here. Like tack down the center. Um, that's preference, whatever you want to do. But let me change my... I'm going to change my stitch. I'm going to go over here to a, to a zigzag. And I'm just gonna stitch it still closed so that way it catches both sides. I keep it pressed down. When you get here to the center, just keep going. Just like this. And you're gonna do the other side and then you'll be done. You want to do the perimeter of the hot pad as well in a zigzag so it will all match. So we find, see, that looks really good like that. Now let's do the last side. See, I like that. And now we're going to put it over here. Got to make sure I got it under here good. to the home stretch, y'all. Okay, and there we are. Okay, okay, y'all, so here is the finished project. I'm super excited about the way it turned out. The little piggies are so cute, y'all. They're just sitting there waiting. They are just darling, look at those little things. They are so cute. But anyway, I am super happy with the way it turned out. And yeah, just remember what I said. I do not use these as a pot holder because I'm just using regular um, batting inside. If you're going to use it as like a pot holder, you need some kind of heat resistant um, interior on this so it doesn't burn your hands. Now, it probably would work okay because it feels pretty thick, but I'm just giving a warning just in case you want, if you want to use it as a pot holder, make sure you don't want to burn yourself. So make sure you use the correct, um, um, batting inside or fusible fleece inside. Okay. Um, that way then it's heat resistant. Now this will not make, this will be good just for your plates on your table. So that's what I use them for. And when I sell them, that's what I tell people. That's what they're used for. Anyway, these are super easy. You can't get past this one. This is so easy. Pull out your sewing machine, y'all. Let's start cutting up our stash of fabric. And yeah, let's make some hot pads. 
Okay, guys, I hope that you like this. Oh, let's talk pricing really fast. I probably will sell these for $6 a piece at my craft fair. They don't take long to make, and it didn't take a lot of fabric. So I think $6 is a good deal for these. And yeah, super cute, y'all. Okay, I hope you guys have enjoyed this super sweet little project, and I will catch you guys soon. Bye.